to be recognized by a community of one's peers holds a different sort of place and meaning. And I think that as a first generation lawyer, there are a lot of challenges and a lot is said about those challenges and those are recognized. Um, however, today I think I, what I spoke about is that I acknowledged that there are kinds of support that you can get, which is through precedent, you know, Justice Venkatachalaya making um, half of that judgment that he wrote uh, in with regard to taking the criminal cases out of the ambit of the Union Carbide Settlement. That was very significant. Then Justice Lalit and his many kindnesses to me um, off the bench and also on it, but also very much when he was a lawyer, you know. Um, even actually Mr. Lakshmi Kumaran, you know, which I didn't say there, but when I was a young lawyer and arguing ex excise tax cases, and there were batch matters, right? And Justice Variava and Kapadia at the time, they said, they, they heard me argue a little bit, and they said, you will lead arguments. So they were being kind because I was the young, you know, the young person there. And <laughs> Mr. Lakshmi Kumaran and his brother, Mr. Sridharan, had a lot riding on these excise tax cases, right? Because they had, it sets precedent, and then multiple other cases then follow. And they were so gracious about it, you know? They were so gracious about letting me lead rather than stepping in and saying, no, 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 we want to do this. So I have had, you know, that kind of support and support also from my, um, my junior colleagues who, who I acknowledged. And these sorts of awards give you the fuel to, because, you know, it's not easy. Litigation is not easy. The adjournments are not easy. The, um, the fact that sometimes you get very short hearings for particular types of cases that require breathing and that's not easy. The mm -hmm. fact that the individual benches have very, very different orientations and you know that your idea of justice may not be and your very sort of strong and clear idea of what should happen in a particular case, right? That there may not be any agreement on that. Um, that's not easy. The fact that there are very long hours to do anything well, I think that, um, and, and I think justice must call upon us to bring hard work and excellence to the table. My, I learn a lot from my younger colleagues, but one of the things that they now, um, some of them now insist on is work-life balance. I believe in work-life balance, look, I think it's a great thing. However, when your client's neck is on the line, and when you are holding that, and then that duty to justice and to your client must always take precedence over your work-life balance, you know? And you make up for it in other ways. You structure your, you, if you want it, you structure your life in other ways, right? So that, so that you get that rest, which is also important. But, but I think that duty, the fact that justice is the opposite of poverty, not wealth, means I think that all of us, as a polity, as a whole, must very clearly be focusing on bringing better justice. We have some of the greatest luminaries here around us today and they have contributed in a big way. But I think for, for us who now inherit these, the mantle of duty to take these things forward, what we must focus on is better infrastructure, more judges, so that a case in the Supreme Court doesn't take 18 months, so that it takes two months, you know? so that a suit doesn't take 20 years, so that it takes two years.